good afternoon good afternoon everyone and uh, at the outset i would like to thank the organizers of wirock uh, for the opportunity to present our work so i'll be discussing uh, surgical repair of dural leaks causing intracranial hypotension this was a retrospective case series and a review of literature i would like to thank my uh, mentor dr eric masica to help me with this project there are no disclosures so intracranial hypotension is an important cause of new daily persistent headache predominant symptom of intracranial uh, uh, hypotension is orthostatic headache and one of the commonest causes is spontaneous csf leaks in the spine the most common location being the thoracic spine there are various theories behind uh, what causes the spontaneous csf leak in the spine and uh, one of the common uh, pathophysiologies is 5 to 8 mm slits in the dura due to discogenic microspurs these patients usually have headache when they get up from a lying down position rarely there can be some uh, auditory uh, symptoms like tinnitus etc and uh, there may be accompanying neck stiffness and back pain This was a single center retrospective chart review of patients with spontaneous intracranial hypotension with an identified CSF leak or a CSF venous fistula who underwent surgical treatment. The duration of the study was from 2018 to 2021. So for diagnosing the CSF leaks we used dynamic CT myelogram technique. So as you can see the patient here is made to go through various positions which accurately diagnoses the site of the csf leak this technique was actually published by the radiologist dr richard farb and it was utilized in all of our patients to accurately locate the site of the csf leak so this is a sample case you can appreciate some csf leak that is coming from the front on a dynamic myelogram so in our series we had a total of 17 patients who underwent surgical repair the mean age at surgery being 49 years six patients had diagnosed csf venous fistula and 11 had anterior or lateral dural tears in terms of the underlying pathology degenerative disc disease was seen in eight patients there was csf venous fistula in six patients and in four no detectable morphological cause could be found so this is a sample case here you can see we mobilize the spinal cord cutting a maximum of two dentate ligaments then we approach the leak in our series we primarily repaired it with suture alternatively you can use muscle fat pad grafting or also a fibrin sealant so this is a case example this patient had epidural blood patch for the csf leak in august 2018 he was symptom free for 2 years came back to us with a relapse and then his main issues were dizziness auditory symptoms along with orthostatic headache so you can see this was the slit in the dura and uh, then we repaired it primarily with sutures surgery that was performed after unsuccessful epidural blood patch included either primary closure of the leak or disconnection of the csf venous fistula the mean follow up duration was 14 months and resolution or improvement of symptoms was seen in 15 out of 17 patients we also had some patients with csf venous fistula who were treated by the mis approach here you can see endovascular coiling of the fistula is done one day prior to the surgery and then the coil is left in place because that helps us to intraoperatively locate the site of the leak then the uh, tube is docked exactly at the site of the uh, embolization before we clip the csf venous fistula a temporary aneurysm clip is applied and we see if there are any changes to neuro monitoring once we confirm that this is not a nerve root that we have grabbed the fistula is clipped at the base and cut thus to conclude the reason behind this research and presenting it today was uh, to create awareness about this condition as orthopedic surgeons we are not aware about uh, spontaneous csf leaks in the spine and uh, it said that the i see uh, what the mind knows so we have to correctly uh, diagnose this pathology because it requires a dedicated therapeutic approach a tailored surgical repair is the most reliable treatment option when blood patch is unsuccessful you can either do an open repair or disconnection of the fistula with an mis technique as a part 2 of the study we will be assessing the post operative mris of these patients and also doing optic nerve sheet diameter testing 
because once the uh, CSF facialized clip, the optic nerve sheet diameter uh, is should increase, which was otherwise collapsed because of the orthostatic hypertension. Yeah, thank you, Nandan. Thank you. Thank you.